All right, welcome everybody to the May 26th Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee meeting. Um, as you are all aware, uh, two things to abide by. The first is the antitrust policy notice that is currently displayed on the screen. And the second is our code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Um, what was it, Dano, you said last week, be excellent to each other or something like that? Um, <laughs> so with that, let's get to the announcements. Uh, so the first announcement is the one that we see every week. The Dev Weekly Developer Newsletter goes out each Friday. If you'd like to have something included in that newsletter, please consider leaving a comment on the wiki page that is linked in the agenda, and uh, your message will get out to hundreds of Hyperledger developers. Uh, the second announcement, uh, David had let us know on the, I think the TSC chat that the architecture working group has been archived. There was an email that went out to uh, the architecture working group mailing list. And um, the only responses that were received were a plus one to archive the architecture working group. So um, that working group has been archived. I want to make sure that everybody saw that as an announcement. And if there were any comments, uh, we could discuss that here, but I, I doubt there's probably any comments, but if there are, please raise your hand and we can talk about that. Um, and then my standard question here, any other announcements that anybody has to make? Arun? Hey, Tracy. Um, this is probably a request to all the lab stewards. So you may be receiving multiple requests from people for participating in Hyperledger Challenge. So I saw so far 11 teams have submitted their solutions. All of them could be raising a request to push them into Hyperledger Labs. All right, thanks Arun. I've seen uh, two lab requests come in this week. Um, there one was one this morning, so I haven't had a chance to review that one yet, but uh, and I think uh, just in general, I think there's actually three open PRs right now. Um, one that's waiting on a response back from uh, the submitter as far as licensing and um, DCO sign-offs. The, the other one, um, there were some DCO sign-offs just in the PR itself. And then, uh, like I said, the third one that came in this morning, um, at least my morning, uh, I saw it here. So uh, I'll get to review that one today and uh, we can make sure that the other lab stewards are taking a look at those as well. Any other announcements? Okay, uh, so with no other announcements, uh, we do have three project reports. Um, the one that came in last week, uh, Hyperledger Bevel, and then uh, the grid and the transact reports that came in this week. When I looked at them this morning, um, about 15 minutes ago or so, I noticed that we are probably not even half of us have reviewed them yet. So if you haven't had a chance to review them, please do so. And uh, I didn't see anything that was outstanding with those, but if there's any questions on any of those, now is the time to bring them up. So I don't have a question, but I noticed the grid projects raised an issue for us which was that which was that they felt like the grid their grid uh, top level domain website is not easy to find yeah that i oh know that was on their uh last month or last quarter as well um david i know you had reached out to um the grid folks on that but uh, obviously i didn't see a response come back but i don't know if you had any offline conversations with them on uh, making it easier to find the grid.hyperledger.org from the project page uh, for hyperledger grid i shared that feedback with the designer who was working on the designs and I, I know that's on the agenda later so we can touch on it when we're looking at the designs but hopefully the new mock-ups will make that somewhat easier, if not a lot more easier. So, but we can discuss that when we're looking at the mock-ups. Is it 
is it easier in fact to find resources like that for projects but i did pass that feedback to the designer and she incorporated that into her mock-ups so david could you put that in a comment in a response to the report so that they know we have acknowledged their you know that they've raised this issue sure if i remember correctly i may have referenced it you on may the have done that but they but are repeating the same as if nothing has been done so sure i, I, I just want to be responsive because we you know this is part of the process and one of the reasons we put these reports together is to give projects an opportunity to raise issues to the tsc and then that makes it the fact that they re, re, you know repeated the exact same statement makes it look like oh they don't know we are actually you know heard them and and doing something so that's just the, what i'm trying to to address sure, that's, yeah. and that's a good point and you're right they might not have been watching our discussions here about mockups i'll point to those mockups in there thanks and and david i don't know um is there something that we can do before those mockups are are done to add that to the the project page or is it that we want to wait till the mockups we agree on the mockups to ensure that um, all changes to the website are made at once. Sorry, I've got some barking dog in the background. Okay. We may be able to do something sooner, but I think we're almost at the point where we can put the new mockups in place. Let's discuss when we get to the mockups about what do we need to do something shorter or move forward with what we've got in the designs. Okay, sounds good. And uh, barking dogs, I think it wouldn't be a TSC meeting. Uh, if we didn't have a barking dog somewhere in here. So I think we're 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 good with that, David. <laughs> um any other comments on the, the quarterly reports at this point? And thank you, Arno, for reminding me of that comment. Okay. Um so for upcoming reports, we have the cello report that's due next week. Um and then the quilt report is also due next week. I did send an email out to David Fuling uh, about whether or not we want it to maintain that in a dormant state or move it towards end of life. Uh, so we'll we'll hopefully get a response back at some point to that uh, email, so we know what uh, what the status there is of quilt. All right, and then the discussion item that I have for this week is. Uh, Last week, after I listened to the recording for the TSC meeting and took a look at the security um, page that Arun had put together, I suggested that Arun put together a PR to propose some of the security related mandates for graduation to um, our life cycle. And he did so. And so I wanted to uh, see if we could just uh, discuss these changes, see what we think of them. Um, there should be a security section that was added here uh, that didn't exist before as a requirement to exit incubation. So um, with that, I think I'll just see if there's any discussion that anybody has related to this. Any objections to what you're reading as I give you a chance to read? Go ahead, Jim, I see you came off mute. Uh, yeah, I was just about to raise my hand. Uh, would it be clear uh, what the uh, foundation-wide security discussions, where those would be happening? Or is that not decided yet? Hart? Um, hey, yeah, thanks, Jim, that's a great question. Uh, we haven't, I guess, formally fleshed that out yet. The big thing with this is that, you know, we do have a security list to address points, right? When, when sort of security issues come in um, through our disclosure processes. And right now we don't have all of our projects with, with people on these lists. Um, so it's hard to uh, get people to respond 
and, and deal with these security issues, which could be urgent. Um, we also have a lot of people, like most projects only have one person that are on the list. Uh, so if that person is on vacation or something, which has happened before, then it also doesn't get addressed quickly. Um, but, you know, um, if, if you have feedback on how this could be uh, efficiently done, uh, we'd love to hear. Gotcha. Um, I, I guess since this announced, um, this is sort of the uh, top line uh, description of the um, uh, of the responsibilities. Um, maybe just add a little details on this bullet, and that should be fine. Then um, include some verbiage um, on, about the uh, the security list. Um, I'll try to come up with some wording, and I assume this is in the in the PR. Yeah, definitely. Um, if you want to comment on the PR with some suggested uh, yeah. wording or changes, that'd be great yeah. too. Yeah, we'll do. Uh, with the background hard, just provide. I should be able to add something. Okay. Any other thoughts or comments on uh, just adding the security section here? I am a little, uh, the, the second point addressed to Pendabot and I uh, probably don't tie that to Dependabot because I, I would say address automatic alerts or something of that nature um, because Dependabot is only one of the tools that, that do this. Um, I'll try to come up with a better wording or a wording that I, I think is good. Okay. And right. furthermore, yeah, go got, ahead. Right. We have to change that. Okay. It's no longer the CII, and Arno has feelings about that probably. So I'm done. Okay. Well, that is not part of this PR, but we can definitely uh, create another PR for whatever the correct verbiage is for. Now the CII badge badging that might exist or not exist. Part. Uh, I'll just say yeah. Thank you, Rai. The intention was never to make that strictly depend on it. Um, so we should change that to automatic. Arno. I, I think you could still put something like such as from depend about to make it kind of you know get more specific. Uh, and still keep it more open as Rice suggests, which I think is a good thing. We've seen in other cases, like you know, chat systems and whatnot, it's prudent not to be too tied to a single solution because they tend to change over time. So I, I completely support uh, Rice motion, but I think we could still name dependent bot as one of the things that, you know, as an example of the things that we're talking about. So it kind of, you know, makes it uh, very clear for people the kind of things we're talking about. And otherwise on the CIA badge, indeed the CIA has been renamed now as part of OpenSSF, the OpenSSF badge. That's a detail. All right. Um, so Arnold, will you open a separate PR to address the CIA badge thing or? Uh, I'm happy to do that, sure. Okay, thank you. Um, any other comments on the security section? All right, so I didn't hear any objections. So I think the security section being added to the incubation exit criteria is um, generally supported by the TSC. And uh, Jim, Rai, you'll make a few suggested modifications to the PR. Hopefully we can get everybody to then review the, those changes on uh, GitHub and provide any additional sort of comments or feedback that you have. The link there uh, is in the agenda. Um, I will also uh, put that in the TSC chat if I didn't already. So the next thing then is the Project Families website revamp. Um, we've got the straw man proposal. So 
David has provided us with uh, a few mock-ups, uh, different proposals for the proposed project page, as well as uh, a proposal for project specific pages. So uh, David, I don't know if you wanna drive us through these two different proposals and um, you know get us to discuss. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I, I'm not sharing my screen, so if whoever is doesn't mind pulling up the first mock-up. Do you want to share your screen? No, I, I'd rather. I'm on my phone. I'm probably not in the great right. position. To share. So, is this proposal one? Um, yeah, death, just the first mock-up on the page. Yep. So, for some background, we've shared these before, and so this incorporates feedback we've had from discussions here, as well as dis discussions that we've had internally. LF recently had an all hands, so we got together as staff and kind of reviewed these as well. So, this reflects updates to the mock-ups again based from feedback from the TSC discussions the task force discussions and then the staff discussions um if you could make that just a little bit bigger yeah the big change so the big change on this one this is the main projects page uh, uh, again I think we've seen this before so I won't necessarily go through everything that's different from the current projects page on the website but I will flag what's changed in this mock-up from the earlier mock-ups the main feedback on this one that we got from the marketing lead, the Hyperledger marketing lead, is that people don't spend a lot of time on the pages on the website. You know, they mostly scan through things. So he said, if you can make it as tight as possible, what you want to feature on this page, that would be better. So if you remember the earlier version of this mock-up, we had divided things into the lifecycle buckets. We had six graduated top projects up top that had more of a, a you know, primary uh, display on the page. And then further down below on the page, we had the incubating projects that had, you know, a, a smaller secondary display. But again, based on his feedback, we tried out in this mock-up, not going with the six graduated projects, but trying what we're now calling featured projects. And the details, again, this is just a mock-up, the content is all placeholder, but the idea was we could select perhaps four projects instead of six and really feature those. And that could, you know, that could evolve and change over time. You know, that, this would be more of a marketing criteria versus more of a life cycle criteria. But you know, what are the what are the projects we want to feature? All projects would still be on the page, but some would be in this featured section and then the rest would be at the bottom. So if you scroll down, you can see what the the kind of the secondary display would be. And so the, all the projects are on the page. All the projects have an opportunity to put the description so everybody can read through. I think, again, this is a huge benefit over the current landscape where you don't actually even see the descriptions on the projects. You just see the icons. You have to click in individually to get all the descriptions. So that's the big change on this one. Um, again, it's still the same format about having a primary section and a secondary section. It's just what the mock-up has changed in terms of what we put in that featured primary section. And and then David, I think the other change it looks like that you made based on the last time we, we looked at this is before you just had the icons um, and you didn't have the names for the projects mm -hmm. down yeah, below. Right. The second, and, yeah. then, and then secondly, I don't think you had the descriptions down below. I think Jim had asked for both of those. And so it looks like those have been incorporated since the last time we looked at this. Thanks for flagging that. Yeah, this has gone through a number of iterations. I can't remember the last time exactly which was <laughs> But you're right. The, there was an earlier one where it was just the logos, which was not, I don't think, enough. Um, so you're right. So every project has a description now. And this goes back to the grid feedback. Right, if you don't mind scrolling back up. You can see on uh, um, each of these descriptions, there's a learn more that would go to the projects page, but then there's also this resources link or drop down where if you click on that, you can click directly into a set of resources. It, the mockup doesn't show it, but you can imagine if I clicked on resources, it maybe would point to the repo, it could point to the docs, it could point to you know, whatever you think would be relevant for the project, you know, tutorials. So hopefully that could address grid, some of grid's feedback about it's, you know, those sorts of resource links are not prominent on the website. And David, when when you click on that, is it a, is it a separate page it goes to, or just a drop down with like a list of the features items? Features would just be a drop down. 
<laughs> and that could be a next step. We could ask the designer to start coding these on a section of the site where they're not public yet, but we could all kind of interact with it and see how, how that dynamic would work. Any comments, questions on the page? Again, I think maybe the big thing to flag is the, you know, having the, the primary section be featured based on what the marketing, you know, lead suggests we focus on versus having to be some sort of life cycle uh, um, bucket. Yeah, I think that's the question that I have, David, uh, just to make sure that we're clear, you're not asking the TSC to provide uh, the items that are the featured, you're suggesting that somebody in the Hyperledger Foundation staff would be developing that, is that correct? Well, we could set up a process where the marketing lead comes to the TSC, maybe on some sort of basis and talks about, we have a discussion about that. I'm not saying the TSC couldn't have input, but the, the, the feedback from the marketing lead was just, how do we narrow that down? And so that implies, you know, having some sort of selection process. Mm -hmm. Peter? I like it. And uh, I think it would be great if we could put this in place the sooner the better. That's it. All right. Thanks, Peter. Hart? I'll just emphasize David's point that this is inherently a marketing thing. Uh, and now that we have, you know, Ben on, who's a professional marketer, he has. Uh, emphasize that we have made some decisions from a technical perspective and not a marketing perspective about marketing that were suboptimal. Uh, and we're, we're really great to, to have him point those out because it seems like he's doing a really good job of, of improving our marketing. Um, but to, to reiterate both your point, Tracy and David's point, this, you know, this really isn't a, a TSC matter and, uh, that being said, if you want to get involved, there are appropriate avenues with marketing. Um, so. Yeah, thanks, Hart. I, I think that's what I wanted to try and drive to, right, is um, I know in your write-up that you had done originally around this kind of topic, uh, you suggested that it probably wasn't the TSC spot to uh, come up with this list of things that would be featured or whatever we want to call it, right? Um, and so I wanted to just verify that, that I was hearing correctly, right? That it was truly marketing and it wasn't going to be something that the TSC had to, to um, say, like, here's your four. Uh, we just randomly picked them out of 12 or whatever, right? Uh, so I, I'm really glad to hear that part. Yeah, and I will just say, like, they have the numbers, they have the analytics, uh, they know what's going to get us the most clicks and the most eyeballs, and that's what they're running with. Okay. Any other comments on this particular proposal? Because I know David has a second one that um, has also been suggested, so we're, we need to review that one as well. But if there's any other comments on this, now's your time. Yeah, so there's right. three, yeah, there's three mock-ups that we can review. That project page, that was the only version of that project page, but there were two versions of what we're, we're seeing on the screen now. So something that's new on the site and it was referenced on that page before that we saw, there's some text that says something to the effect of, oh, are you not sure which project is right for you? Check out our getting started guide. So it is trying to just give people a little bit more support with trying to understand, you know, we're presenting a lot of information to people, you know, you know, here's 14 projects and one of these may be right for you, but go figure it out yourself, right? I, I think that's kind of our current approach, like click into all these things, there's a bunch of links that you can digest. And after you've gone through a bunch of these links, then you'll know what's right for you. And, you know, I think that's probably not the necessarily the best approach, like how do we perhaps package up some of that information in one place so people don't have to click into the wiki, click into the repo, click into this, click into that, and kind of pull all that stuff together. So this is a proposal for a new page on the site. The earlier page was a update to an existing page. This mock-up would be for a new page, uh, again, where we collect some of this information that's all already out in the community, but it's 
pulled together and packaged in a way where it's easy for people to digest. So this would be the getting started guide. The proposal is to have a series of different uh, um, factors that we're letting people evaluate by. And this mock-up only really shows one of them, but you can see at the top, there's a set of tabs. So there, this page would in, include a series of different things. Again, we can only see one. This is where maybe if we start coding it, that would be a good next step. Like code it on a place on the website where we can interact with it so we can see, get a better sense of what this page would look like. But again, the idea is a series of tabs. You can click into each one of them. In, in that tab, you would then be able to get, you know, a comparison of how different factors, you know, apply across the different projects. Uh, um, and again, with the goal of, pulling information that is out in the community, but it's probably spread across half a dozen different websites and that would require somebody a significant amount of time to pull together themselves. Why don't we pull it together and then provide it in a way where we can allow people to digest it? So um, I had shared an earlier version of this mock-up on the call. I didn't think the format and the design was necessarily uh, the best way to allow people to scan it. So I asked the designer to create a second one, kind of a, a, a second, option i think based on the discussion of all hands we all felt this design was stronger so we just i i unless there's you know feedback from people saying this design doesn't seem to really work you know this would be my recommendation let's code this and let's see what it looks like in action but this would be again a new page that we're calling we could change what we're calling it but currently thinking of calling it like the getting started guide and David, the the uh, the why am I not able to the buttons at the side get started analytics? Um, what do they do? What are they intended to represent? So are you talking about the different where so underneath the like underneath hyperledger base two where it says get started and it then oh, says oh, analytics. Oh, oh, oh. What do those things do? To get started, we go to the project page for that specific project. Uh, um, if that's not clear, I guess we could change the label on the button, and then the analytics would could go into the LFX to allow people to, uh, you know, look at some you know, relevant statistics for that project. And who do we think the audience for this sort of page is? Well, this goes into the persona work for the website. So, I mean, I think you could arguably talk about how I think a developer could come in here and get a different set of information than for perhaps like a business analyst, uh, you know, for example. I think that's where the tabbed content up top comes from. There's some content up there that might be is more relevant for that technical developer audience, like what the language is, for example, or what consensus mechanism. I think there could be some other stuff that's more relevant for a different persona. You know, like if we have some content on here about, you know, where, what are the different industries, for example, or use cases where these, you know, different projects are being used. So in theory, I see different personas who could come to this page and get different content out of it. And yeah, I think that's where I'm driving towards is, I think maybe analytics might be interesting for developers, but I don't think analytics would be interesting for somebody who's looking for industry use cases, right? I think some of the use case sort of write-ups that have been done would be a more useful sort of link, if you will. And so I wanted to see, do we think this is specific to this page, right? These get started in analytics or, or to, I'm sorry, to this tab on this page and different tabs might have different buttons there or. Oh, that's or, a good thing. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we, yeah, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that. So a tab, we could put the personas at a tab level. This is a, developer tab so that's surface more technical stuff this is a analyst tab uh, yeah sir and this is again where maybe having it coded so we could click into each tab would be helpful because then we can say this tab maybe should have this link okay jim yeah so i guess first of all i i, I assume this is going to be in addition to the to the to top level page for a sort of next level drill down? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I guess uh, well, I'm kind of struggling with this because um, uh, if I'm a developer and, 
and this the intent of this page is sort of present a decision tree for me to pick which the LTI should adopt. Um, I, I don't think that's that's practical because um, it, it, there are so many there are so many dimensions that leads to should I use Besu or Fabric or Iroha? Um, it just doesn't work this way. Um, trying to decide which one I should use. And uh, also, um, I think people who, who landed on this page usually already have some idea, right? Um, I'm gonna be using Besu or I'm gonna be using Fabric. Uh, I just don't know if, if, if that was the intention and if it's intended to be a decision tree, I, I just don't know if that's, that's that's warranted. Um, if we really want to help people sort of compare the differences between them, I think we need something much more elaborate, you know, some sort of blog or um, uh, a deeper level comparison among them. Yeah, you know, what's what's the differences? Um, for example, just just randomly, Iroha, right? They 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 spend a lot of time on the client side making sure you know the the the, the mobile uh, applications can be easily developed using their SDKs that's what they spend a lot of time on um it's it's just not very easy to present in the in the uh, tabular way i hear what you're saying and that goes to maybe where different tabs have a different sort of infer you know, interface, maybe this more table-based layout does make sense for some things, but I hear you, maybe there's a different tab where that's not the interface. And again, maybe that's something that can get explored if we can put this on the website so we can interact with it, but I hear you. But yes, to, to step back a little bit, that is the goal. I mean, we consistently hear from people, we show them the landscape, you know, and they're like, okay, I see there's a lot going on here, but like, <laughs> <laughs> what what should I do next, right? And, and I feel like right now, at least on the website, that burden is entirely placed on that person to click into every single one, explore all this information, kind of collate it, pull it all together themselves. And that would involve, like I've counted, I mean, it would be dozens and dozens of links for somebody to absorb that crosses literally four or five or six different, you know, web properties there's the website there's the wiki there's github repos there's read the docs pages like it's and we hear from people that it's just overwhelming so the the high level goal is how do we pull information that's already in the community into one place so when somebody comes to us and says i see you have a lot of stuff here i, I think this is something we want to explore but like how do we evaluate it like we have a place to point them instead of right now again I don't know if this has been your experience with the landscape, but the landscape just forces you to pull it all together yourself by clicking into 20, 30, 40 more links, which is just too much. Oh, no. So first, I had a question. I mean, this is just a mock-up. There is no such thing running somewhere I can play with, right? You cannot click on this tab like language SDK, which is what I've been wanting to do. Not yet, but that was what I was hoping to get to from this conversation. Are we comfortable yeah, yeah. enough with the direction of these mockups where we can say to the designer? To make the effort. Yeah, I get it. So I so so thanks. And and so I actually think you know this is very interesting piece of information. I think to address Jim's uh, comment, which I, I understand and I would agree with him that you know choosing the you know uh, a specific platform probably goes beyond what can be conveyed in that. Uh, in that kind of uh, documentation. I think this needs to be presented as documenting, you know, a set of, you know, uh, a whole set of characteristics. And maybe we can have a disclaimer at the top saying, you know, if, if you're in this to, to you know, to, to make, a, I mean, this can only go so far and only addresses a few dimensions and actually choosing the proper platform for your solution or for you for your use case rather you know may is beyond what we can possibly communicate through this kind of like having some disclaimer that would 
address some of Jim's concern that people might be misled to believe, oh, this is all I need. Otherwise, I wanted to also say as a lower level kind of comment, but I wonder, I mean, the language base, I understand what you mean. That's the actual language it's implemented in. I, uh, maybe we need a better word than base. And I think most people, I'm not sure they care so much about this. The most important is, you know, what languages are supported for the uh, smart contracts and for the SDKs that people are going to actually implement against. Because that's what, you know, and contributors will care about the language. The language people will care when they are contributing to, to the platform. But that's actually a small number of people, right? For the most part, there are people who want to use it as an application developer. And that's the important aspect. And I know that, you know, a lot of those platforms support different languages. That's what we need to expose first. Uh, and, and I hear you and you're right. I mean, maybe some of the things that are just, you know, stubbed out in the mock-up mock won't end up being what we display because that's not really the right content. And this is where, you know, the details of what should be in here, you know, we do really want your input right. and your feedback. So if but everything- I, I like it otherwise. I think this is a good thing to- uh... So I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was gonna. I was just gonna summarize. It sounds like at least for this page, everything I've heard so far says we kind of need to see this in action before we can have a better opinion about about it. Uh, that's not I, quite what I meant. Huh? I mean, I personally, <laughs> I think I, I I think this is valuable, and I would encourage spending the resources to develop it further. Uh, I think we may have to discuss some of the details. And we may need some kind of disclaimer that you know addresses Jim's concern, but otherwise I'm all for it. I think it's it should be presented as something that's documenting facts, different characteristics, and again with a disclaimer saying this cannot possibly be fully comprehensive about what people need to take into account when it comes to choosing the platform for their use case. All right, thanks, Arno. Um, I just had. Uh, language bases, contributor language, and language SDK is application uh, developer language, right? Uh, Hart. Thanks. Yeah. And Jim, to address your point, like, I don't think we really wanted this to be a, a full, like, getting started guide. You know, obviously, if you're going to pick a system to use, you're going to want to look, you know, at more than a table. You're probably going to want to try out the systems and everything. We sort of thought this was a getting started to getting started, um, for lack of a better term. And we really just wanted to help people find information about projects. So one of the unfortunate things is that all of the projects so store and put their sort of core information in a little bit different places. So if you are trying to look for, you know, all of this stuff, uh, it can be a little bit tricky because there's not like, you know, a standardized place for every project where you can necessarily find all of this. Um, so one of the big utilities is just finding the basic information. Uh, and we think that, you know, th this is very useful for that problem. Yeah, thanks, Hart. Arun? Hey, thanks, Tracy. So a couple of, I have a couple of comments. The first, first one is on creating multiple tabs. I think having too many tabs or options would kill the purpose to make it simple. Then idea should be to provide all the information, whatever is necessary for somebody who's coming in in more simpler form than to create uh, multiple options for them to iterate through. If the decision three that they need to make to reach where they have to reach is longer, I think that will um, not be pleasant experience for somebody who is new. So if we are considering, for instance, the language and the supported SDKs, they could probably part, be part of um, another subsection when they are interested in a specific project. But at a higher level, if they are coming in, probably this kind of information should not be there. So instead of creating hierarchy at the top level, it should go inside each project. Right? Hey, here is more information about this project since you are interested in it. and. Uh, the re and other reason or the second comment associated with that was um, I thought that till now Apple Ledger avoided comparing two projects or 
comparing any project within Hyperledger. The goal was always to provide the fact for about each project to the user and let them compare on different merits, different uh, basis points, right? Um, so some of this could be fact sheet. For instance, language is, is probably a fact sheet, but if we go deeper into feature set, then it may become a comparison across projects. And that's all from my side, thank you. All right, thanks, Arun. Bobby? Yeah, I just want to jump on what Arun said. From the newcomer's perspective, this is invaluable. Like, I intend to put this right on the homepage of the Learning Materials Working Group, because when you get a lot of kids from college coming in looking to get involved, they have one thing in their pocket, and that's a, a language. And if they can connect it to a blockchain, I think that's fabulous. So thank you for doing this. All right. Thanks, Bobby. Any other comments on this or David, anything else you'd like to? Yeah, I would just say thanks for the feedback and I hear Arun. I mean, if the goal is to make this less overwhelming for people. So if the page itself is overwhelming, that's not solving the problem. So yeah, we still need to keep it simple. So if the tabbed interface or if there are too many tabs, that is good feedback. And I hear you about the comparisons. I mean, again, I, I feel like this is just collating and packaging factual information that's already out there and not, you know, adding any additional, you know, subjective information that would be a comparison. So, um, but good feedback. And we do have one other mock-up if we want to spend just a couple, I don't know, Tracy, if there's other stuff you need to get to on the agenda, but there was one oh, other one. One more. Yeah, just before we jump to that last one, David, Jim did raise his hand. So I'm gonna make sure he had an opportunity to comment. Oh yeah, um, I just wanna clarify. Uh, I, I'm all for trying this this um, uh, this format uh, as long as it's not meant to be a decision tree. So I I I I'd be more than happy to uh, to help out with the categories and the contents. That's great. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's move on to the last uh, page that you've uh, got for the project specific page. So this would be, as you say, the uh, mock-up for the project, you know, a given project specific page. This is the mock-ups looking specifically at Fabric, but this would apply to you know every page, or excuse me, every project on the website has a page dedicated to it. Um, so again, unlike the getting started page, which would be a new page, this would be redesigning an existing page. And so there's two things on here. Again, we've reviewed this before. I'll just go through it quickly. But the two things on here that are different from the current project pages are kind of a persona-based approach to bucketing some of the links. So you can see that that black horizontal bar right now has developers, users, business analysts. So instead of just throwing a bunch of links at people and letting them figure out which one may be relevant for them, trying to help you know direct people and putting these in these different categories, which the current project pages don't do. It's just here's here's a set of links and you can kind of pick which one. Um, and then on the right, you can see there's a sidebar. We did have a discussion in the past about what would go in the sidebar, but the idea being that many of our projects link to each other, but you don't get a sense from that right now on the website. If you were in the fabric page or any of the pages, really, you wouldn't know that you know other projects were linked to it. So what we wanted to do in this mock-up was have the ability to have those cross connections. Again, and we've, you know, I think we've talked about this in the past, but the main thing that we've done in the design based on feedback from the TSC is removed the idea of linking to labs in the sidebar. Before that section had said related project and labs, now the mockup just says related projects. So if I remember the conversation correctly, we had had the discussion about would we link to labs or not, we decided not to. So I had that removed from the mockup. And I think the the feedback would be then if we have a lab that is worth linking to because it is you know something that we want to promote from the marketing standpoint then maybe we need to be encouraging that lab to think about becoming a project so then we could then link to it from that way so there there isn't much change on this one but i just wanted to close the loop and let people know that we asked the designer to kind of make that one change Thank you. 
All right, thanks, David. Any comments on this page? I personally like it. Um, I think it by separating in the personas, I think that helps a lot. Kind of know where you're supposed to go. Arno. I'm sorry, what? You're, you're off mute, so the, uh, uh, Sorry, I it's apologize. No, no, that's I'm messing okay. up. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. Just wanted to know if you had any comments there. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just forgot okay. to unmute. All right. Uh, sounds like nobody has any comments on this one, David. I think uh, people are waiting for it to be done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually had one, which is unfortunately Explorer is out of the picture, but uh, I, I think we can ignore this for the sake of the exercise at hand. Uh, yeah, that was just placeholder content. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> that's why I'm teasing you with it, but it's kind of amusing in some way. It does bring up a good point, though. We have to decide what projects actually do get featured on the sidebar of which other project pages. So that is something that you know the TSC. When we start building it is out on the website, the TSC can look through and say, hey, the, you know, this project should probably be linked to versus that project. So that, I mean, we will need to sort that out. So, so David, I know we already have uh, written that down. It probably needs to be updated to reflect uh, projects that we may have recently end of life. Um, so I'll make sure that that gets updated. It's in, it's also under this task force that we've written stuff down. So, uh, Hart. So David, I'm going to push back against that a little bit and suggest that marketing should possibly have the most impact on this. Uh, obviously, we don't want them to make uh, technically incorrect links, but uh, we may want them to actually pick the projects to go on the sidebar. I think that's a good point, but yeah, I think you're right. Absolutely, you know, I I wouldn't want to put the burden entirely on marketing because they wouldn't even necessarily know what their options were, right? I mean. Yeah, I don't think yeah. Ben necessarily knows that X Project X is related to Project Y, right? I think Ben knows more than you're giving him credit for. <laughs> um, but yeah, we can, uh, we will obviously, prov you know, the technical community can obviously provide input. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, exactly. Input is a good way to have, yeah, a discussion about what fits where. Okay, any other comments on this person? All righty. Um, so it looks like no. Um, I think the just to kind of summarize on where we're at with the project families website revamp, um, we did have a conversation on Tuesday. A few of us were able to get together and have a conversation. Uh, we uh, maybe can I share my screen here quickly, Rye? I think that would make it easier. Uh, share screen. And I think this is the one. All right, so hopefully you can see a wiki page that says task to be completed. I'm going to assume that's a yes since. Yes. Uh, thank you. I can't see anything anymore. Zoom has taken over my whole life. Um. So the task to be completed, determine how we will group projects on the Hyperledger website. Uh, we do have uh, kind of this functional grouping proposal uh, that we put together. Uh, we, in the meeting on Tuesday, discussed this criteria for projects to meet and obtain priority for Hyperledger Foundation marketing. Uh, as you heard today in the discussion, uh, we are going to leave that to marketing. So this task is kind of not a task for us anymore. Um, so I, I think we're fairly close to being finished with this task force based on the discussion that we had today. We've got website project pages related to the project sections, uh, the website main groupings, and then uh, this criteria thing, like I said, is something that we just discussed and decided that it's not uh, really in the purview of this task force, but is in the purview of um, the marketing folks. So. I think I just wanted to kind of wrap up on where we're at specifically with this task force. 
comments or questions on that? Okay. Uh, any other business that we should cover before we close the meeting today? I'll just say thanks again for all the feedback over this conversation and previous conversations. It's been an iteration, so thank you for kind of working through it uh, and taking a look at it a few different times. But I'll get my next step will be to get these with the designer onto the website in some sort of a draft form so everybody can play with it. So when those are ready, look for some links, and uh, we'll we'll have another round of discussions before anything goes live. All right, that's great. Thank you, David. Uh, we will look forward to seeing something we can actually click on and play with and provide additional feedback and thoughts on. Uh, anything else anybody would like to cover before we close? No? Okay, well, thank you all for attending today and we will uh, be meeting again next week. Jim, I think you are up for a task force discussion for Project Health next week is the task force that's next on the agenda yep sounds good okay well have a great week and for those of you in the u.s have a great long weekend um and we will see you next week